I've just bought the DeWalt DCG 405N angle grinder for a very specific job where I'm away from a power supply. So today I'm going to try it out, use it and abuse it because there's no way it's going to be nearly as good as a corded angle grinder. Is it? So yes, more and more often I tend to be turning towards cordless tools these days. And I've got a project coming up out in the paddock, up on one of the roofs, where I'd just rather not use any cables. I think it's just safer and more convenient. So this is a DCG 405N angle grinder. It's a 125 millimeter or five inch angle grinder and works at 9,000 RPM. And it works off the same battery platform as all my other DeWalt tools like my drill, impact driver, circular saw and jigsaw. And that's a DeWalt XR range of batteries. So I've just bought a bare unit here. It doesn't come with a box or anything other than an Allen key in there and some instructions because I already have all the batteries. So let's have a look at the unit in a little bit more detail. You can see at the front here that we have an on off switch, which is on forward and off back, but you can also lock it in place which means that it can run without having to push the switch. And I don't think that's legal in the US, but it is here in the UK. And I must admit, I've used an angle grinder in the past that has a locked on switch. And what I found with that is that it means that you can turn it on and then just concentrate on holding the machine and cutting the piece rather than always thinking about where your thumb needs to be. So it might not be as safe, but I think it's actually quite a nice feature and it means that you can just concentrate on what you're cutting. Obviously there's a standard guard at the front and what's nice about this is that there is a very simple push button to actually move it and adjust it around. So you just need to push this silver button here and actually the whole thing rotates quite nicely to wherever you want it. And then it locks into position quite nicely once you're in place. The spindle lock is on the back and it comes with a knurled flange nut as well. So there's no requirement for tools like this anymore. In fact, it doesn't even come with one of these. You're expected to use your fingers tightening it up. Or if you really want to, the one thing it does come with is just a standard six millimeter Allen key that fits into this same knurled nut if you really need to tighten it. But probably no need because it's actually easy enough just done with your fingers. And talking about this knurled nut, unlike traditional angle grinders where there's two ways of putting the nut on depending on the discs you're using, you just use one nut in the same way. And it's got this sort of sprung inner section here that you line up with these notches in the spindle. So let's just fit some discs. Whether it's a big fat grinding disc like this that's centered quite nicely here and then tightened up. Or it's just a very thin, maybe a uh, metal cutting disc. Then you just use the same knurled knob in the same way. So you can't actually get it wrong. And also you can get some nice tension on there just simply with your fingers. If it is too hard to undo, as I said, the six mil Allen key will help you out there and just helps crack that and then you can take it off with your fingers. The only other thing it comes with is a secondary handle that can either screw in left or right. And that goes in quite nicely and it's quite nicely rubberized as well. So it's a good grip on it and maybe cuts down a little bit of the vibration. And apart from that, there's not very much else to say about it. It's a, just a really nice, easy unit. I was gonna say you could use it with one hand, but that's probably not what you should be doing. But once the switch is on, then really it's quite a nice one-handed unit. And it's sort of well-weighted. And really, it's as simple as that. Let's put uh, a battery in. Let's make sure that this is tight. Let's put a battery in and just See what it sounds like, shall we? Well, 
Well, that stopped really quick. You could hear that sort of electric braking coming in there. And yeah, that, mainly, that really does run at quite some knots. Before I take this grinder out to the real world, I thought I'd try it out on some mild steel bar that I've got in the workshop. One thing I would highly recommend before doing any grinding inside is to have a fire extinguisher at hand, just in case. The sparks from something like this go everywhere, and in my workshop there's plenty of opportunity for things to catch fire. After a couple of trial cuts, I changed the cutting disc for a grinding disc, which although won't put as much stress on the motor as cutting, still pulls plenty of juice from the battery to keep it spinning at 9000 RPM. Well, I must say, that has got quite a punch to it. I think it's probably more powerful than my small, cheap, angle grinder that's called it actually. I'm using a four amp hour DeWalt battery that is fully charged, but that is really quite powerful. Let's go outside and let's cut up something I really want to get out of the way, and that's my old derelict greenhouse. Regular viewers would have seen this greenhouse a number of times in my videos, and after taking a reciprocating saw to it a couple of months ago, with varying results. It's been lying flat with brambles and stinging nettles growing through it over the summer. So I'm keen now to get it cleared away. Once again, I've got a garden hose on standby nearby, just in case I manage to set fire to this dry grass in the area. I'm having to be really careful where I'm cutting this frame as there's a tendency for it to collapse down as I'm cutting and for the cuts to close up and snag the blade as it's lying on these soft brambles and grass. And here's a tip for you. When you change the blade in an area of dense foliage, make sure you don't drop the all important locking nut. As soon as this left my hand, I had visions of spending weeks trying to get another one from DeWalt. Luckily, I found it and I've learnt my lesson. After removing 90% of the frame, it's clear that the last 10% I'll have to leave until I cut out the brambles around it, as they're now so intertwined. I'm intent on using this grinder until I run the battery flat, so with the metal cutting blade still in, I turn my attention onto some corrugated roof sheeting that I'll be disposing of soon.
Before the battery dies, I need to try some stone cutting, so I change the blade and find a paving slab that's seen better days. So that is the battery absolutely dead. There's absolutely no charge left in it. And yeah, I mean, just a little bit of a residual, but you couldn't actually cut anything with that. And I counted around about 25 to 30 cuts in total from that four amp hour battery. Not all of them will be on the video, but it was around about that mark and what I have to say is that greenhouse is made from a galvanized steel it's not aluminium it was fairly hard cutting no easier than cutting through this mild steel so what do I think of this in total well I think if you're working with an angle grinder all day I mean all day cutting tiles or slabs then I think you'd really still need to be plugged in because the aggravation of changing one of these every 10 minutes would drive you nuts and you probably wouldn't be able to charge them quick enough to be able to swap them over. But for the rest of us that only use an angle grinder here and there or for the odd few cuts in awkward places, I think this is absolutely the perfect tool. And I have to admit, using this with a fully charged battery, I don't think gave me any less power than using a corded angle grinder and the flexibility of not being tethered to anything really just like using a cordless drill just makes your life so much easier as I said at the start I bought this because I've got some work to do up on a roof in the next couple of weeks and I don't want to be dragging around a cable and an extension lead when I'm working on a roof I think that's a little bit dangerous and it's going to be so much easier just being able to hand use one of these by hand and be able to just take it up and down the ladder and not be tethered to anything. So in conclusion, I would give this a 9 out of 10. And the only reason it doesn't get a 10 out of 10 is it would be nice to get more cuts out of the battery. Having said that, this is a really powerful machine, just as powerful as the corded angle grinders that I own. So you can't really have it both ways. You can't have the power of a machine like this and expect the battery to go on forever. That's just the way it is. I'm really glad I bought this. It's going to work well for the job I've got in mind. And I think it's just going to add to my tool selection to be useful and used many times over the next few years as well. So really glad. I went ahead and purchased this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on the channel and please subscribe. Go and have a look at our Patreon page where you can support the channel and see extra added weekly videos as well. So until next time, I'll see you then.